Welcome to another Learning to Read drum lesson video. In this drum lesson, we're going to cover the topic of dotted half notes and dotted quarter notes. In order to do this lesson, you'll need the beat sheet called Dots, and you can get that at OnlineDrummer.com. Let's start off by looking at number one. The first note that you see is a dotted half note. A dotted half note is worth three counts or three beats and we'll get into the mathematics behind it in a minute but just to simplify it know that a dotted half note is worth three counts the first measure is going to sound like this one two three four notice that that dotted half note took up three counts it took up all of one all of two and all of three so the next note which happened to be a quarter note didn't come in till beat four one two three four by this point you've probably realized that there are other ways that we could have written the first measure for example we could have just put a quarter note on count one a quarter rest on count two a quarter rest on count three and a quarter note on count four and that would achieve the exact same rhythm one two three four you'll find out more and more as you uh, learn to read music that there are many ways to write the same pattern and a lot of uh, different writers use different methods to achieve the same pattern you will just have to get used to it and learn all those different ways let's try playing line one together measures one and two are the same and measures three and four change it up a little bit by putting the quarter note on count one and the dotted half note on count two so you'd have it it would sound like this one two three Four. So the dotted half note, which takes up three counts, takes up two, three, and four. Line number one. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. 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 Let's get into the mathematics behind the dotted note. I'll be using number terms. Please don't let that throw you off or turn you off because a lot of times when people start speaking numbers, uh, it's time to shut off. I understand that. But actually, the dotted note is an easy concept to understand, so let's do it. A dot placed after a note increases that note's value by one half. Let's take the dotted half note, for example. A half note is originally worth two counts or two beats. The dot increases the value of the note by half. So half of a half note or half of two is one. So altogether we have the half note, which is worth two, and we have the dot, which is worth one. So therefore, a dotted half note is worth three counts. Let's say for another example, we have a dotted whole note and a whole note takes up the whole measure and it's worth four counts if there's a dot after it it increases the value by one half the value of the whole note so we have the whole note which is four and then we'd have the dot which is worth half of that two so altogether a dotted whole note would be worth six counts or six beats before we mathematically figure out uh, the value of a dotted quarter note let me show you how it's played, how it's going to sound, so that you can focus on the rhythm and the sound of the note uh, and not so much the mathematics behind it. Let's take a look at line number two. The first note that you see in line number two is a dotted quarter note. Whenever you have a dotted quarter note that begins on a number, either a one, two, three, or four, you're going to rest on the next number. For example, if you have a dotted quarter note that begins on count one, you play on one, one and you rest on two. If you have a dotted quarter note that begins on two, you'd play on two, one, two, and rest on three. With dotted quarter notes, you don't rest for the entire second count. You only rest for half of the second count. Take a look again at line number two, measure one. There's a dotted quarter note on one, so you play on one, you rest on two, but you don't rest for all of two, you only rest for half of two. And we've discussed eighth notes and how they break each beat into halves. So one and two and. And an easy to understand explanation, you're going to play on the and after the number. So look again at measure one. You have one, 
to end. Play it again. One, two, end. We've only rested for half of the next number. Count three also has a dotted quarter note. So you're going to play on three, three, and rest on four, play on the end of four. So it'll sound like this, three, four, end. When you put the whole first measure together, it sounds like this, one, two, and three, four, end. On measure two, the first two uh, notes are eighth notes, one, end. The second count is a dotted quarter note. So we know that we're going to play on two, rest on three, and then play in the end. The second measure sounds like this, one, and two, three, and four. Let's play line number two together. I've slowed the tempo down a little bit because it's a more complicated pattern. One, two, ready, go. One, two, and three, four, and one, and two, three, and four. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, four, and one, and two, three, and four. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, and four. Now that you know how the dotted quarter note is played, let's take a minute to mathematically figure out the value of a dotted quarter note. Uh, the dot after it increases the value by one half the value of the note. So the value of a quarter note is one count. It takes up one beat. So we have one, and the dot is worth half of one. And a half of one is a half. So the quarter note's worth one, the dot's worth a half. Altogether, the note is worth one and a half counts or one and a half beats. Line number three incorporates some rim into the patterns. Now obviously the dotted quarter note patterns are played the same except you're switching between the rim and the drum head. Also remember to alternate your sticking. Let's play line number three together. One, two, ready, go. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four, and on to line number four. In line number four, we have sixteenth notes. And just as a review, sixteenth notes are counted one e enda, two e enda, three e enda, four e enda. The first count on measure one is four sixteenth notes, and it sounds like this, one e enda. Count two is the dotted quarter note. So that means the dotted quarter note starts on count two. We're going to rest on the three and come in on the and. So it's going to sound like this, two, three, and a. Uh. Those are two sixteenth notes at the and, so it's and a. Uh. And then, of course, uh, count four is just played for e and a. Uh. When you put all of measure one together slowly, it sounds like this. One e and a, two, three and a, four e and a. Be careful not to rush after that dotted quarter note. Wait for the and of three. Measure two slowly sounds like this. One and a two e and a three four and skip ahead to measure four. We have that eighth rest in there. Measure four sounds like this. You have one and two is a eighth rest. So you rest on two and play in the and one and two and three and four and. Let's play line number four together. I've slowed the tempo down a little bit more because this is a little bit more complex. Line number four. One, two, ready, go e and a one e and a two, three and a four e and a one and a two e and a three, four and one and two and three and four e and a one and two and three and four and one e and a two, three and a four e and a one and a two e and a three, four and one and two and three and four e and a one and two and three and four and line number five is even more complicated because it has a lot of eighth notes connected to sixteenth notes if you haven't seen the lesson uh, learning to read series eighth notes connected to sixteenth notes i recommend that you watch that so you can better understand uh, these types of patterns let's play line number five one two 
Ready? Go! One and a two e and three e and four e and one two and a three e and a four e and one two and three e and four and one e and two three and four and one and a two e and three e and four e and one two and a three e and a four e and one two and three e and four and one e and two three and four and Line number six is an interesting rhythm. There's a lot of rim playing, and the rim basically drives the beat. Make sure you're alternating your sticking and reading ahead or looking ahead so you know what's coming up. Line number six. One, two, ready, go. One and a two e and a three e and four and one, two and a three e and four and one and two and a three e and four and one. Two and three and a four and a one and a two e and a three e and four and one two and a three e and four and a one and two and a three e and four and one two and three and a four and. And that's how to play dotted quarter notes and dotted half notes. Remember that a dot placed after the note increases that note's value by one half. A dotted half note is worth three counts. A dotted quarter note is worth one and a half counts. An easier explanation or way to think about the dotted quarter note is to think if it begins on a number, you rest on the next number and play on the and. If it began on one, you'd play on one, rest on two, play on the and. One, two, and. I hope this lesson has been useful to you. It'll take a little bit of time and practice to get used to reading the dotted notes, but I'm sure you'll get it. Keep drumming.